story of this jacket. I wore it a couple videos ago. I don't even remember what the hell I was filming, but regardless, I said, who wants to hear the story of this jacket? And a whole bunch of people said yes. So here we are. So this story begins a few years ago with probably one of the things that you would never expect me to say, but a few years ago, I actually got a job sewing for Twisted Sister. I'm sure all of you out there know Twisted Sister, even if you're not a fan of their music, they made some big contributions to rock and roll, and that was very cool. So they were doing a Christmas show in Toronto a few years ago, and they needed seamstresses to make their, you know, dancer stuff and whatever. So me and my very good friend and fellow Satan seamstress, Scary Carrie, uh, got a job sewing for them, which was really exciting. So we would go to Toronto from time to time. We sewed from her studio sometimes. We'd have to go in there as well. And of course, going into the building where there's like rock stars and like very important people, obviously they have like serious security, right? So to no one's surprise, they couldn't get me through the metal detector. They tried. There was a metal detector. Everyone else is going through just fine. I obviously am a nightmare for people who have to run metal detectors. So they couldn't do it. So they were like, go over there, extra security for you. And I was like, it's fine, I'm used to it. So I went over, they put me through extra security. They did the one thing, which didn't help because it just beeps all over my entire body. And uh, they, you know, patted me down and make sure I didn't have anything. And they're like, okay, you pass security. Go over there to the side elevators and go upstairs. And I was like, all right. So we go over to the elevators. I get in the elevator with Carrie and also Mary, my friend Mary Morning was there as well. We press the button and we're waiting for the elevator doors to close and I'm kind of just standing there waiting. And all of a sudden I hear somebody yell, that's fucking awesome. And I look up and Dee Snyder is running across the lobby toward me and he gets in the elevator and he's like, I'm riding with you. And he's like, this is fucking awesome. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, it's not every day that a like legitimate rock star tells you that you look fucking awesome and like screams at you from across the lobby. So that was, that made my black little heart very happy. And he kind of looked me up and down once the elevator doors closed and said, why are you here? And I was like, I'm actually here to sew for you. And he's like, fantastic. Well, I can see that you like know what you're doing. That's great. Have a good day. And the elevator doors opened and he got off at a different floor than us. And he got out. We all went ee like 12 year old girls because like that's fucking cool, right? So the elevator went up another floor, we get off. We go in, we have a meeting with his wife and the other seamstresses and whatever, and we're told what we need to do and what we need to make and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I will say for the record that his wife was, to put it in the politest way possible, very unpleasant. Uh, all of the seamstresses definitely had some uh, issues with her, including myself and Carrie, but we did our very best to please her because she was the like head designer on the show, so we did what we were told, and that was that. And the dancing girls that came for biddings, they did what they were told, and that was that. But uh, there were some tears shed, and uh, some people didn't have some very good times. But we did our best to make her happy, and there you have it. So I was looking through, they had racks set up, right, with, with different people's outfits. It's like this is so-and-so's rack, and then this is so-and-so's rack. So everyone's clothes was had a rack of its own, so people didn't get confused. And I found this rack, and I was like, this rack is everything this rack is amazing like i don't know whose clothes these are but jesus like and i was saying this out loud i was like if these clothes go missing like nobody check my suitcase and all of a sudden i feel and i turn around and decent and i was standing there again he's like what was that about you stealing my clothes and i was like oh I was, I was actually kidding but uh seriously like they're they're really they're really cool and i saw this this jacket not not actually this jacket but a jacket that looked very very similar to this on his rack and I fell in love with it just that moment and I thought I'm gonna make myself one of these one day not like a replica of his but something very much like it because it was very very cool it had like the sleeves grabbing it on and everything like that and I was like I gotta I gotta do this so you know we finished up sewing for them whatever that was a really cool experience I can't say that I like enjoyed it necessarily because there were some bad times as well but it was awesome and it's a cool thing to put on my like things I've done resume which is neat so finished up the show, that was that. Fast forward to the following summer, I was out on a rare garage sailing day and it was very bright out and I was wearing sunglasses and I was like, just going to garage sales, checking stuff out. And I find this short black leather jacket and I'm like, I'm gonna buy this. Whatever, it was, it was pretty snug on me, but I'm like, it's like 10 bucks, whatever, leather jacket, I'm gonna buy it. So I hand the girl 10, go back to my car, take off my sunglasses and realize the jacket is not in fact black, it is blue. 
it, I bought a blue leather jacket because my sunglasses were on and it looked black to me. So moral of the story is do not go shopping with sunglasses on and definitely if you do, check the color of things before you purchase them because it's a prize. So I dyed the jacket with shoe polish, like with shoe uh, leather color. So it is, this is part of it here, this is part of it and under here, this is part of it too. And then I found a military jacket as well. So we got a military jacket, we got from the thrift store, we got a black leather jacket from a garage sale, and then me and my good friend Scary Carrie cannibalized both of those jackets and put them together and made this sort of like very inspired by the jacket that Dee Snyder wore at that Christmas show. So obviously made to fit me because he's a big man and he's a lot bigger than I am. So yeah, so we grommeted this and we like bound, they, we bound these in suede so that the grommets could take a little bit more pressure, add some cool military patches and everything. But uh, yeah, gonna give you a close up of the jacket. But that is how this jacket came to be by me making a very stupid purchase with sunglasses on and not realizing that I bought a blue jacket instead of black. Um, saw a cool jacket by Dee Snyder that I wanted to replicate for myself one day and then me and my friend put this together. But it's cool that it's not exactly his jacket. It's very inspired by, like I said, but this has a lot of touches of me and also my friend Carrie. And this jacket has actually been added onto over time. Like I keep adding stuff to it. So when we first finished it, it had less stuff on it than this. And then I kept finding things and like adding them on afterward and being like, ooh, I got these like safety pins for Christmas. Ooh, I got this guillotine pin. I found like this little pocket on a belt and I riveted that on. So, but I love this because it's adjustable in all the ways. See, it has lacing all up the sides. It has lacing up the arms. The arms are laced onto it. So, you know, whether I gain or lose weight, I can adjust the jacket and it still fits me. So I think that is very cool. We're gonna give you the close up now. right now in the medieval fourth that I think would look really cool on this so they might in fact get added today who knows but anyways I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you want to follow me on any of the social media I have all of them we're gonna list them all below so that you can look at all that if you want to buy me a Kofi you can it's Kofi.com slash Matt Mattson it supports my fabric art the maintenance of my sewing machines and also hopefully us saving up to buy some real filming equipment one of these days um, we also have a Depop Depop.com slash Matt Mattson if you want to check out our secondhand stuff it's a combination of like me, Jessica, Brody, and also some vintage stuff we've thrown in there. Uh, message me for shipping quotes if you're interested in any of my stuff. And I think that's it. Let me know what you thought of this story. Let me know what you think of Twisted Sister as a band. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. See you around for my next fabulous YouTube video.